I have so much respect for my competitors, but when people compare me to the other competitors, it really doesn't even faze me because I know I'm already going to win. Athletes want to compete at the CrossFit Games because it is the pinnacle of their sport. If you just get to that point, you are one of the 40 fittest people on the planet. I don't enter a competition thinking that I'm going to lose. Going into the CrossFit Games, my sole purpose there was to win. Coming into the 2022 season, Tia Toomey has a chance to stand alone in history, to be the first and only athlete to win six consecutive CrossFit Games titles. The question was like, how is she going to do it and what's that going to look like? I don't think it's going to look like years in the past where it's just win, 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 win. Toomey's back to zero. Oh no. And O'Brien is across. I do not care how hard I go, I'm just going for it. A horse will race so fast that if the heart explodes, that's now. For the first time in five years, we are going to get to see Ricky Garrard at the CrossFit Games. The last time we saw him was 2017. He finished third, and then he tested positive for PEDs. Seeing Ricky wearing the white leaders jersey, I think forced a lot of people to confront a question that maybe we hadn't really considered about what our feelings would be around the possibility of not only Ricky coming back, but winning. He dropped that, I was like, you're gone. Yeah. Everyone's just roaring for someone to see Ricky. <laughs> Rum Krennikov went into destruction mode. He just looked like a machine out there. I know you're hurt. Everybody's f***ing hurt, and you're tougher than everybody. You just get so hyped up, and you're like, I'm ready to attack this. This is going to be one of the most epic Saturday nights we've ever had. We've seen this before between Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath. He's got to keep his balance. He's got to keep his balance. Gerard will do it, and Medeiros will do it. Man, if that doesn't get you fired, I got goosebumps all, all across my body from that. Welcome to the Cross the Games podcast, everyone. I'm chasing him with Tyson Oldroyd, who is a one of the people behind the documentary that is coming out this Friday, Retroactive. Tyson, thank you for joining us today. We just want to talk to you about, you know, obviously, you've been a part of CrossFit for a very long time. You've had a hand in these documentaries for a very long time and just wanted to Talk to you about what's coming up. It's getting released on Friday, but uh, hey, first of all, thank you for joining us. But I, I tell you what, if, if you're not ready to run through a wall <laughs> after that trailer, like, that's how we know you're. That's how we know you're an android. That's, <laughs> I think that's the test. Yeah, no, I think I think. First of all, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and yeah, that, that trailer. Um, I think it does what you want a trailer to do, right? I think it gets you excited. Um, we're super proud of, of this film. Like we're, we've been proud of all of the ones that we've been able to be really fortunate enough to produce, but this is a good one, man. The storylines were amazing and yeah, I hope, I hope people are ready to tune in and enjoy it. Come, come Friday. And I, I've watched that. I, I mean, it's, I have watched that trailer like at least 15 or 20 times and every time it's still, Gets you for the beginning, which makes me really excited about the film. Now, you sent the film to me the other day to preview. I know a couple people have gotten it, and, and but like I, I'm waiting, right? Yeah, like, I'm yeah, getting yeah. my watch party together, right? So like I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions just out of ignorance plus, plus excitement because I, I mean, I love the documentaries. What, what you guys and the team have put out every year for for near a decade with these, you know, really official documentaries, and I would say the. The first big one was what? Was that Froning was really the one that kind of kickstarted these quote unquote games document? I mean, the, the first first one was Every Second Counts. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that, if you guys if you guys haven't seen that, I mean, you want the uh, the aromas version of a CrossFit Games documentary? Every Second Counts is. I mean, that was the uh, the original. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And and a lot of people forget that um, Sevon and and uh, uh, Carrie Peterson uh, was was a part of that one with Sevon, but. But yeah, they 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 were doing things way ahead of their time, and and uh, and we kind of did the same thing in. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember. Was it 20? I can't remember what year it was um, that we produced Froning, but the the uh, Froning was 14. I think that wasn't it, or after his retirement. It was kind of like his retire. I feel like that was almost like a retirement, like documentary that turned into a games documentary. He did, well, he, 
he just had a lot of um, really interesting things happening in, in his life, you know, um, at the time with um, he and Hillary adopting and, and, and he was and and Hillary, thank goodness, were very gracious to allow us to kind of document their um, their their year, kind of like everything that they had going on. But yeah, it's funny, you know, that was guy like none of us knew what the first thing about producing a feature length film um or how to how to get it out to the world right on tier one platforms but that's where we kind of dipped our toe in the water and we we learned a lot that that very first year um and um yeah it it it, we stumbled our way through self um distribution which was painful and full of learning um Mm. we we fixed that the next year and (laughs) brought on a distribution company to, to help us where we uh where we really needed help with now is that Gravitas? Is is that the distribution yeah. company? Yeah, Gravitas. So that's that's like a eight or nine year relationship now that we've been maintaining, and they've they've been a great partner on the distribution um, side of things. But yeah, yeah, we kind of the the current or modern era of the documentary, uh, you know, a lot of you could say was kicked off with Froning because that's the first film we took to mm-hmm. uh, tier one pl- streaming um, VOD platforms, and. And we ended up going to a couple of subscription platforms. A couple of the films made their way to Netflix. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. We've learned a ton along the way, for sure. When, uh, when did you first get into CrossFit itself and, and then with the, the company? Yeah. Um, I've been lucky enough to be a part of this for a really long time. I, I, I stumbled into it uh, right as I was on my way out of the Marine Corps. Okay. Um, and this was pre affiliates, you know, there were, it was everybody was kind of doing the garage. <laughs> it's like, I kind of started with CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was, it was back in the day, back in the day. So that's pretty cool. And then, uh, so, and that was like, Oh, uh, Oh five, Oh six, I think. Um, and then, uh, yeah, opened up the first, um, the first affiliate in, in Utah well, in the Salt Lake um, Valley. Uh, yeah. And Chris Spieler, uh, and, and a guy, like a lot of people probably know, um, Damon up at Wasatch CrossFit, yeah. uh, the, the three of us, we, within three months of, of each other, we opened up the first three boxes in Utah and this was in like late, again, late Oh six or something. Um, so yeah, it was pretty cool. And then, uh, I did that for a couple of years and ended up, uh, getting an invite to join the, uh, seminar team when we first propped oh, up yes. seminar staff. Um, you know, there in the early days, it was, it was Greg, Dave, Nicole, you know, uh, Boz. Yeah, the- I don't have a lot of, I wish I, I could haves or, or wish I would have, but I, gosh, I, I mean, I had a great level one seminar staff team. I, don't get me wrong. I had, I had Chuck Carswell, Lance Cantu, Joe Alexander, Pat Sherwood, Mike G. Like I had a pretty stacked oh, level one crew. Yeah. But man, to take a level one with Greg, Dave, Nicole. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lucky you. Yeah. Well, no, I, I well, I, I kind of got to, they had just started to prop that team up and, and I went to my level two, um, at the ranch and this was in 2008. Um, and now this the level two though, then is the is, old is, level two. Yeah. I, 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 so if those that don't know, like tell them about the old level two. Well, the old level two had like a 70% fail rate. And it was a, it, it's basically the level four. Yeah. Today. It's kind of like the new level four. Yeah. So it, it was, um, it was intense and it was, it was a full weekend of like, and they do, you know, your shit, like, can you actually coach? This isn't the level one introductory course. Um, you know, the, this, this is, this is the breakdown of the methodology. This is what we're all about. Right. This is a, this was like, this was a real deal. Like, can you actually coach? Um, we don't hand out participation awards here. Like you either, you either cut it or you don't, and you walk away with some, some feedback to, to, to kind of work on and come back. But, but anyways, I was, I was really fortunate, um, to, uh, pass my level two and, and shortly thereafter, um, got an yeah, email passed on the first try passed on, was, was fortunate to pass on the first go. And then, yeah. um, was was shortly thereafter invited to um intern my first level one and uh yeah this was this was back in 08 so whatever 15 years ago that's where i that's when i started working for crossfit headquarters okay. um, was 15 years ago on the training staff and um the internship 
process went well and I ended up getting picked up and started, you know, cruising the country and, uh, and, uh, coaching, you know, coaching gigs. This is like, I was about to say, um, you know, wearing a red shirt, but back then the shirts weren't red. <laughs> I mean, it changed colors. They were like orange. There were some blue ones. Oh, uh, we had, we had black with blue letters, black with blue letters. That's what we it was. Had, uh, we had some Brown um, shirts at one point. Oh, those, were, those were sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the, uh, we went to the first, uh, it was the first ever uh, training summit, you know, which oh. if you any of the staffers, you know, it's like, it's like a highlight of <laughs> all the staffers. Like, it's like you mark it on your calendar and it's like, that's one of the, that's one of the peaks, yeah. right. Of your like, year. It, it, like a family member. I'm like, I will miss your wedding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Trainers yeah sorry. I'm, I'm getting together with uh, 200 of the world's greatest trainers. <laughs> and I'm lucky enough to be a part of that group. Well, we, I was, I was at the very first, um, trainer summit. This was in, uh, golden Colorado. Um, we're at, at a place where we, we used to do seminars there like a ton. I mean, it, for, for years we did them. I, I worked several there, um, maybe a dozen. Um, and, uh, anyways, I remember that they handed us, uh, our new trainer shirts at that, at that summit. And they were like these uh, orange, adidas they had oh, the <laughs> <laughs> and of course there was like you know the crossfit logo seminar staff logo but uh, mm -hmm. but anyways yeah like um i was really lucky to to join that 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 team of insanely talented people um way back when we when that team was first kind of propped up and and uh yeah and then 2010 um i well actually i was i was working a level one in san diego um and uh this was like you gotta remember too it's it's tough for people to I, I think maybe envision this but like crossfit was like it was nothing back then it was just like it was it's such like a the beginning of rome right it's like but a whisper yeah it was a full it was like an underground movement that like you know people just didn't know but anyways i was working a level one in san diego and uh this was in this was probably 2009 probably 2009 maybe 2010 and uh and at, the, at that point it was like gosh crossfit seemed to like be getting some traction it was like this might really turn into something <laughs> you know and again i'm i'm i'm, I'm short I'm, I'm freshly out of the marine corps i'm running i opened up my affiliate the first affiliate in the salt lake valley in utah um i'm working seminars i'm having a blast life is good but uh dave pops into the, the level one in san diego and and i just kind of made a passing comment to him during lunch or something Mm -hmm. like hey i don't know where this thing's going but if crossfit ever gets to a point where they're considering full-time like employment like i would just i'd love to put my name in the hat and it was just a passing comment yeah fast forward i don't know six months nine months i get a random phone call from tony budding who's one of the ogs in santa cruz mm -hmm. tony tony out of necessity um by the way, Tony Budding might be the person who gets the absolute least amount of credit for where CrossFit is and, and like, you know, where we have kind of come. I think that is a fair statement. Yeah, for sure. Right. But anyways, I got a, I got a random phone call from Tony and he was like, Hey, what would you think? We're, 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 we're at a point where like, we, we, I think we need to create a media team. What would you think <laughs> about coming on? And I'm like, I have no media experience. <laughs> goes, I was going to ask you, I was like, you come out of the Marine Corps, you start coaching CrossFit, you get, you get level two certified, which was nearly impossible back in the day. And it's still impossible for the level four now. Yeah. Did you have any background in this? No, I, I had no, I had no background. That's what I told him. I was like, I'm like, Tony. And I knew Tony, right? Like I got involved in those early days and like the, the Greg's, the Dave's, the Nicole's, the Tony's like, you know, they're, you know, they're these like big time personas now, you know what I mean? But like back then they were just like regular folks. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, anyways, I told Tony and I'm like, I'm like, huh, this is interesting. Like I, I did tell Dave, like I'd be interested in throwing my name in the hat. I'm like, but I don't, I don't have any media experience. I have no background in this. And he's like, no, he's like, I don't, I don't think that matters um, because of what I, where I think you would plug in. Well, and he goes, he goes, I what, what, what I think we really need is, um, somebody who can, who can oversee and manage, um, content production, like core CrossFit content mm -hmm. production. And he said, I think, you know, given, 
given um, your kind of intimate understanding of the methodology as one of our staff trainers, coupled with your you being one of our first affiliate owners and understanding the needs of affiliates when it comes to content, I think you're, you know, I think you're perfectly suited to come in and, and give it a go. And so anyways, that's so yeah, yeah. He, he invited me out for kind of a, a working interview. So flew out to Santa Cruz and uh, um, had some super deep conversations with Tony. Anyone who knows Tony kind of knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> he can get philosophical and pretty deep on you. Oh. Half the time I'm like, I'm trying to like track. I'm like, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's like, wait. <laughs> and then like an hour later, like he would loop it back and be like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I see what we were doing there. So yeah, no, just lucky, man. Um, yeah. I mean, know. you said it, man, like lucky. And I, early day CrossFit, and even now this this happens sometimes is, I, I call them serendipitous like, like moments of how people got to where they got early on in CrossFit. Yeah, You make a passing comment to Dave that, hey, I would love to work full time. And then later, Tony Budding calls you out of nowhere. He wants to put you on media. You have no idea what you're doing, but you're saying yes anyways, right? Because you have a passion for what this could become, right? What you've been involved in, where you came from and where you see this going. You're like, I wanna be a part of this to make this better. I think that was a lot of early times. Uh, not, I don't want to say early, like I'm just like some old man on his lawn, like yelling at all the new kids. But like a, a lot of initial startups and, and employees and, and people that just kind of like got new positions. It was more like, hey, we have a need to fill. I would like to help do this. I'm not necessarily saying I want to do this for me. I want to do this for CrossFit. Right. And I think a lot of decisions people used to make and a lot of ambitions were not self-serving or I have this personal ambition to grow my, my personality or myself within the brand. It's like, I want to, I just, I just want to, how can we push this out? How can we make this better? How can we get it to more people? How can I be more involved with this versus, you know, you being at the front of that ambition? Yeah. No, I think, I think that's a, been kind of maybe one of the defining characteristics of, of folks that um, historically have been kind of brought into the fold, I guess, is, is kind of one, a passion, for being a part of something that truly makes a difference in the world. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I, it's such a, I, we're so fortunate. Like if, if we're if, if, to call yourself a crossfitter, to call yourself an affiliate owner or a coach, you know, I don't get to do those things as much anymore, but what I do get to um, take a lot of satisfaction from is, is commissioning and producing media that I, that I think has a similar impact, but it, it's in service of making people better. Mm -hmm. Right. I think like, there's, 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 there's something um, shared amongst the folks that are, that are part of this organization that like, we all, we all have that, right. Yeah. We all take like extreme satisfaction in, um, and just putting your head down and grinding, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. in lot of step, shoulder to shoulder with everybody else to just push this thing forward. And it's not, it's not to pursue self-interest or, or anything like that. It, it's literally just, it's, it's in service of, of the community it's in service of uh being a part of a movement that like truly moves the needle in the world you mm -hmm. know what i mean and yeah. that's, that's pretty dang cool to, to be a part of you know it is and i think that's where the special part comes from is just being able to be a part of that oh yeah, oh, yeah. right and never really like like i said it's like you're not putting your name in in neon lights and saying i did this it's like i got to be a part of this yeah. Like, this is the most important part. Yeah. It's crossing. Actually, like, actually, along those lines, like this, this whole thing right now is actually pretty uncomfortable. Like I've, I've, <laughs> I've intentionally stayed away from putting myself out there um, for, for those very reasons. Like I don't, it's not my thing. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't seek the. Well, I'm uh, glad you did, man. I, I think more people, I mean, you talk about Tony Budding being one of the best kept secrets in CrossFit. And I would say you are among the those individuals that, I mean, you haven't intentionally done that, but, uh, I mean, we go back a, a long time, really, since I first, I first maybe came on the scene, oh, maybe as an athlete. And we've, we, we cross paths a little bit in that. Not much. I mean, I didn't really like garner a lot of attention when I, my <laughs> clip on the radar, <laughs> but, uh, you know, once I got on seminar staff and those training summits, I feel like that's where we really got to uh, start that relationship. And then obviously me getting to start to work for the media team and the broadcast okay. team, even though our relationships and what we did were in two different areas, 
yeah. know, back when things all started. And you know, my beginning was similar to you. It's like I ran into Dave at a at the Central East region in 2012, and he's like, "When are you going to get on seminar staff?" And I said, "When are you going to invite me?" And then two years <laughs> later, uh, he invites me, and then uh, yeah. I I send an email out to Dave Ray of yeah. all people, and I was like, yeah. "Hey, I've got a pitch for the Cross the Games update show, just a segment idea." And then three days later, Rory McKernan calls me. He's like, hey, do you want to go broadcast the Central East Regional? <laughs> right, which got me to the Central East, which got me in front of Dave. And of course, I was like, yes, I have no background whatsoever in media or broadcast. And I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to do it. Yeah, that's so funny. That's how it goes, but, man. That's how it goes. Yeah. It, it, it makes me think of uh, um, <laughs> a good buddy of mine and, 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 and a producer that I've worked with now for over 10 years. Um, a guy named Nico from Denmark. Yeah. Uh, dude. You know, right? Good dude, man. He, you know, he he's was, a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Oh yeah. Avid, avid. Like he, being a Cowboys fan, I take that personally, but I'm like of all. Yeah. Because Donovan yeah. McNabb was like really cool to us back when I was younger. The guy, the guy was like literally like during season, he'll be up in the middle of the night watching games. Like he is, he's That's the wild. biggest NFL fan. I like, it's, it's crazy, but. Anyways, yeah, the the first year we had a regional in uh, Denmark. Um, it was it was in Copenhagen. I don't can't even remember what year this was. It was 11, 12 years ago or something. Ooh, Denmark. Was this like one of the first ones, or I think like literally the very first one. It was the first one in in. Uh, it was at this velodrome in in. Uh, yeah. South South I got to be there in like fifteen, I think. This uh, I I don't even remember this. It was a long time ago, but. Yeah. Um, he, he was, he, you know, he was working in the, in the TV industry as a camera op and, um, he was cross, he was crossfitting and he decided just to go volunteer. And, uh, anyways, fast forward, <laughs> he's been doing, he's doing media for us. He's, he's, he's been at the games every year since, you know, like he'll be out there again this year. And anyways, it's just kind of, kind of how it goes exactly how yeah. you explained it. And, and that's, uh, I love that part. I oh love yeah. That part. So, all right. Yeah, so right. you are, was it full time into, I mean, with Tony budding, what do you said around 10 or nine or 10? I took, I took a full time position, sold my affiliate, moved to Santa Cruz and 20. Oh, okay. So you went all in. Yeah. 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 decided to sell the affiliate, um, took the full time position. I, I really felt like the writing was on the wall back then. Like this, mm. the, this thing was special. Um, mm. I, I, I was watching it change lives in my own affiliate. Um, it um yeah it, it was it was something that felt really um good to be a part of and and it felt like a safe bet to kind of go all in so sold sold the affiliate and moved to santa cruz in 2010 and and yeah took over uh actually it's kind of there's a funny kind of story here i, I took over content production but it was supposed to be core content and okay. during when i when i took the, what's the definition of core content well, that's what that's that's kind of where this is, because basically what happened was, you know, this is, you know, again, 2010. This also corresponds with when the games were starting to really turn into their own animal. Right, know? we moved to Carson for the first time because yeah. we outgrew Aromas. Yeah, it was like this was more than, you know, the, the the backyard barbecue at the ranch. Like it was like the games were gaining momentum and really turning into their own thing. And from a from just a resource standpoint, um, as Tony put it, it was a vortex that pulled everybody in. And so I took my job and he was, you know, he was, it was kind of tongue in cheek, but he said, he's like, he's like, it's your job, but you're fired. If you come within 10 feet of the games, like, mm. it's like oh, I need someone to oversee core content production. We need to make sure that, oh, okay. that the attention's not being pulled away from um, our core media effort, which is, um, you know, sh storytelling, showcasing the, the 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 magic that happens at the box, right? Through mm -hmm. transformational stories. Uh, like, you know, again, it kind of goes back to what I was saying a minute ago, like changing people's lives and making them better, right? Like telling those stories um, has always been important. Um, and then also creating um, instructional content, you know, filming, assigning people to go film at level ones and level twos and, and, and us maintaining our stance that we're the leader in, in, in um, the world of health and, and, and wellness and movement, you know, mm -hmm. um, that we're the authority. Right. And part of that is, is constantly putting content out there. It's, it's no one has more to say about human movement than us and our trainers. And like, 
that's kind of what I was tasked with, you know? Uh, but it was conditional. It was like, you're fired. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you even come close to the games. Don't and, you dare. <laughs> that, uh, that, that didn't, that didn't last long. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> we, it wasn't, it wasn't long after that we, we started, uh, um, I was, I was lucky enough to put together the teams to uh, not just film the documentaries, but, you know, produce the, the, the first lead up series, um, road to the games, mm, uh, the road yeah. and the road to the games. Wow. Gosh, I forgot about those. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Anyways, that, that didn't last very long. And, Tony, Tony wasn't very serious, I guess, about his, his threat. But well, then eventually Tony came to be a big part of games producing <laughs> and yeah, just, content there. The whole thing has just over the from the beginning, it's just we've 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 grown and evolved very organically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind it's kind of like it's kind of like just CrossFit in general, right? Like yes, you know, Greg Greg, you know, kicked this whole thing off in a in a small space in Santa Cruz, and you know, it's like every step of, of the way there were just things that would happen that would that would force kind of the next step right mm-hmm. you know he he gets a phone call from the police department in florida saying hey we got a bunch of guys that want to come out and get certified and greg like puts puts the phone on hold and he's like hey lauren a bunch of guys want to come out and get certified <laughs> it was like well fuck i guess we better put together a seminar yeah <laughs> <laughs> And boom, the the seminar team was formed like really organically, and that's kind of how it came. And that's to how be. affiliates came to be. Is like, oh, other people want to do gyms here. Uh, here's a five hundred dollar affiliate fee, and just you know, don't like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Tony used to say this a lot too, but like, don't fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really the way that it it worked for a very long time. We were doing a hundred miles an hour while light while laying track at the same time, and like. Right. That's and like while right. really having no experience in the fields at which we were working in. As oh, for, sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, even when, even when I opened up my affiliate, like, uh, you know, I, I, I started crossfitting. I was like, this is, this is awesome. Like I, I, I needed something different in my own training. I was like, this is cool. And I was working as a, as a personal trainer at the gold's gym at the time. And I was like, mm. I, I bet I have some members that would really like this. And so I'm like, well, what does it take to like, offer CrossFit classes, hop on the website. This is back in the, in the early days. Right. And it was like, there was this thing, you know, called affiliation. I was like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess let's, let's look into that. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, and we got a reply back. I don't, it was probably Lauren or Greg uh, personally responding to emails back then, but it was yeah. like, um, yeah, there's, there's a, there's an annual affiliate fee and there's, there's a prerequisite that uh, you have to have attended your level one. Um, but back then, like, Again, everything was evolving in real time. They were laying track as they were doing 100 miles an hour. And so uh, we were able to actually open up our affiliate before even attending our level one. <laughs> <laughs> Just that concept right now is wild. Well, and like, I don't know, like that. Another, oh, we trust you. <laughs> another, another example of that would be uh, my first internship gig at a level one, I got like invited to join the team, you know, it, it's come intern to join the team and I get down there and I'm thinking I'm going to shadow and just like learn from these guys that are already on staff. I'm yes. super pumped. Get there uh, Saturday morning training meeting. It's like, you're running group three. And it's like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. So like literally my very first gig, I was already running a group and <laughs> it's, it's just another example of just like, yeah. um, you know, this, this, this thing's been rocking and rolling and mm-hmm. like things have needed the, the, the changes and the things that needed to be implemented. Um, those things happened out of necessity, very organically. Um, yeah. So, well, let's shift gears to the media documentary side, right? Gotcha. So the, we said the first documentary came out in 2015, but it was really about the 2014 season and centered more around rich, but you still got a good, idea of really what happened that year at the CrossFit Games. And I think that that evolved as we went on. But, you know, we, we, we talked it all the way back to 2008, Every Second Counts. Yep. And then some spans in between 2009 and 2014, when we really didn't have too much. The broadcast really first started, I think, right around 2010. When we moved to Carson, it was very informal. I think it was uh, Justin Judkins and Bill Grundler. And yeah. it was more like, hey, you're here. Do you want to go up there? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And then we had, you know, you, you talked about the 
the Road to the Game series before we came to documentaries. So those, those mini docs. And if you guys haven't seen those, go watch those. Those are freaking fantastic. I absolutely love those. And one thing that actually has been a hot topic of discussion is like the behind the scenes so oh, yeah. it's more of that like renegade doc series that uh you know savan pioneered and, and went through and like you know did you have any involvement with any of that leading into re- like your full basic like, into the crossfit games media space um not a ton i mean i i actually uh the, the like the behind the scenes i don't remember it's been so long man i don't remember what happened when and where um it's at this point for me it's it's a bit of a blur like i don't remember like there were there were times when we were shooting um uh four documentaries and and one of the what we did is to to be efficient and and cost effective we would um we would pull some of that material that we were shooting for like a documentary yeah and and we were like hey we can can share make good use of this stuff and and like why don't we create a lead-up series and so again it's like another thing that was born out of like you know, let's just give it a shot. Like, yeah. so we started producing the, the, um, you know, and that was like, that was like a high polish, uh, lots of character development because we were spending a lot of time with athletes mm-hmm. at home in their boxes, wherever that might be all around the world, um, to capture for the doc. And then we would, we would come back, we'd pull f- from some of that and, uh, to, to kind of get people pumped about that, the current season and the lead up to the games and that material at that point, like the, the the broadcast side of CrossFit, led by Joe Novello and, and team and Joe, you know and Tony, like that was evolving rapidly, and so we were able to like throw content at them that they would package for our broadcast efforts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then at the same time, like the behind the scenes, like like Stevon was rocking and rolling on that, um, um, which was really cool. One of the things that I find really cool about that, and I don't think he gets enough credit for, is like. He was literally leading the media team mm-hmm. and still rolling his sleeves up, grabbing his camera and going out there and grinding, putting together the behind the scenes, which again, it had a whole different flavor to it. It, it was, was hours upon hours of yeah. just some. No, no one, no one, no one interviews like Sevon. He's no. in a, he is in a world of his own. Like nothing's off limits. Like, <laughs> yeah. He is not afraid of asking any I mean, time about like dodging podcasts is like, I am not, I don't know if I'm ready there. Cause I feel like I'm going to get like exposed or something. Yeah, <laughs> so it's going to come so, out. He's, he's amazing. He's so amazing. But, um, but yeah, like all of that stuff, like we were, we were hitting on all cylinders, man, for a lot mm-hmm. of years, putting out a lot of insanely, insanely awesome content. So what went into basically this concept of, Hey, let's do a, games documentary well well i mean first of all it's 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 the the subject the the material is absolutely amazing right like to to have an opportunity to, to to document um literally the fittest people on the planet push the boundaries of human performance yes like they 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 don't look real right they're absolutely ripped out of their gore and they're doing things that appear like mm-hmm. not human you know and 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 they're literally pushing the boundaries of what's what's possible in terms of human performance um you know it, it didn't take long for us to 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 realize like the opportunity that we had in front of us it was like hey let's let's just take a stab at this let's 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 give this thing a go and mm-hmm. see to see what we can do and and again we kind of got our feet wet with the froning doc it was like that was the first time we'd done anything feature length yeah it was it was amazing Dude, i remember the build up to that and the the movie preview i mean where i felt like where did you guys first where, where was the first showing was that at wadapalooza or was it right before the games uh we did like a full for froning we actually did a full um premiere sure. run so yeah. we we went to I mean some of the ones that stand out to me now uh, again this was ten years ago but uh, the, some of the ones that stand out to me were um, we did one in Cookville for 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 Rich's hometown yeah. and we did it at a park and we brought in this huge blow up screen no way. and you know projected the mo- the film in the park in Cookville that one was super fun and then uh, I want to say we had it was pro it was probably an invitational in madrid that same year oh wow yeah the madrid 
yeah. we lined up a theater um, in in like downtown Madrid, and uh, and had a sold out um, crowd in there. In Madrid, I mean, they still are wild. I love it, the vibe there. Oh, man, my the visits there for a few different CrossFit projects like are will forever be like some of my favorite CrossFit trips. Just trips in general, really. Yeah. And it was it was insane, but. But yeah, like we we were doing a bunch of those um, premieres with Froning, and uh, and that kind of kicked things off. And it was it was super popular. It was it was pretty funny. Like we, I, I've mentioned I mentioned it earlier, but like you know we we self distributed. We this is the first time we had done something like this. We'd yeah. we'd been producing like high quality media, but we hadn't done anything feature length, and we certainly hadn't gone to any of the tier one, you know, platforms in the world. And so we stumbled our way through that. And, and in that process, we were having a hard time getting um, like iTunes and Netflix to respond to emails. Like they wouldn't even get back to us. Right. Um, and anyways, we self-distribute. And as soon as it goes to market um, within like 24 hours, we were getting emails from iTunes. They're like, who the hell are you? Guys? <laughs> well, it became the number one most downloaded uh, documentary. It shot up. It shot to the top of the charts. I don't remember how well it did and how quickly, but it, it performed really, really, really well. And it was not to our surprise because, you know, we've got an absolutely amazing community that's global. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere. Um, they've always been ravenous of our content, especially around the games, because these guys are pushing the envelope when it comes to what's possible, you know? Um, and so anyways, yeah, it was pretty funny. Like we could not get them to respond to emails. And then all of a sudden, 24 hours after launch of the film, <laughs> they're like, who the hell are you guys what have you done to our platform? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and, uh, apparently. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that, and, 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 and that, that from, from there, it was, we were kind of off to the races. It was like, it was a, it was a concept that we proved and it was like, okay, yeah, let's go tell. And, and, and really like from there, we, we kind of shifted gears a little bit and we started to tell, you know, more comprehensive stories, mm -hmm. you know, so we would go in. And... Yeah. And it's kind of how it's gone for, you know, I guess the last whatever, eight years or something, um, you know, there's like, like right now leading into the games, there's a few storylines that are kind of emerging, you know what I mean? Pre show. Yeah, right. And so like we would anticipate those things and those athletes and those storylines. And that's what we would go to the games in anticipation of. And so the first day or two, like at athlete check-in, we're spending time with those people who appear to be the, the, the key stories. And then of course, once the competition gets going as documentarians, it's pretty simple. You follow the stories yeah, as they emerge. And, you know, um, yeah, and it's, it's just been, we've been, right. Like we've been, we've been the fittest on earth series was born, you know, and, um, you know, and it's, it's really, it's taken some different shape here and there. And, um, you know, but, but yeah, we've, we've, that's, that's how it kind of got started. It was kind of like a, let's just give it a shot sort of idea. And uh, was super fortunate to work with some incredibly talented people. Uh, those early films were, were, they were co-directed um, by Heber Kane and Marson Sawyers, Ian Whitfer, uh, my wife um, now, um, Mariah Moore. And, uh, and, yeah, just crazy talented people, like absolutely amazing, amazing, working, crazy talented people, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. just talent, like the hours, days, yeah. months you guys put into this is, is unfathomable. Yeah, yeah. The thing about the documentary is that I really love, and, and you said about this, is that we get to watch these people from the sideline or from YouTube or from the screen and watch them do inhuman things perceived to us. Yet we all can relate to that in a sense because we all do CrossFit. Yep. The thing that I love about the documentaries is that you take these superhumans or the people doing inhuman things and you humanize them in a way that I, I, I can't think of a better word to use other than like intimate. Oh, yeah. You create these intimate behind the scenes relationships. You, I mean, like I, the things that come off the top of my head is, you know, getting Matt Fraser after he loses the 2015 and, and the, like his one liner that was just crushed is like, I thought I would finish this year surrounded by my family celebrating a victory. Instead, I s s finished it underneath the tennis stadium alone. Yep. And like yep. just things like that, that you, you guys have got to, to just capture is 
the reason why I really like to I watch these documentaries is one, you get to relive the action, which is really awesome. And, and the, the stories that you guys portray is amazing, but the intimate humanizing relationships you, you catch that no one else can is I think at the heart and soul of these documentaries, which makes them more endearing yeah. to the community and the fans and, and maybe even other athletes. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's not always easy too, by the way, like, cause a lot of those moments, like, um, the, the crew doesn't, they don't want to be, they don't want to be pointing the camera at some of these things. Cause mm -hmm. it's, it's not always, you know, hero celebration shots, people fired up and stoked because they just did, they won an event or they, they, you know, they podiumed or whatever. Like a lot of, there's, there's a lot of heartbreak, you know, it's, it's sport, it's sport, right. And sports yeah. highs and lows, um, victories and defeats. And like we, as, as uh, uh, yeah, as documentary filmmakers, like the whole the whole team just just has to be there to capture those raw moments. Like, how hard whatever, is that? Whatever they might be, it's it's tough for people. Like, I'll I'll give you one example that as you were as you were talking about that um, one one thing in the in particular stood out to me, and and that was um, Brooke Wells mm. match event. Man. The way you guys covered that last year, that was hard, man. That was really, that was, that was really tough um, because we, you know, there were, uh, who knows how many cameras pointed at that. We captured it. She was front and center stage. Yeah. And, you know, we've got, we're shooting high frame rate, you know, reds. <laughs> I mean, it was like, oh. we've got some crazy stuff that there, there's no way we, you know, we couldn't, there's angles that there was no way we could share. Like it wouldn't have been the appropriate thing to do. Um, we were, we were able to convey what happened without it being, you know, needing a warning, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. And gruesome. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but when that happened, um, like I remember, I remember, you know, Mariah, she, you know, she's been not only directing the last few films, um, but she's also been shooting the behind the scenes with, with the women. Mm. And so, you know, when that happened and she was rushed off the floor, you know, Mariah had to chase her and document that whole thing. And if, if you watch the film, you, you saw that. Yes. That was not easy for her to capture. Um, it was, it was tough, but she had to be there. Right. Is it's, mm -hmm. that's documentary filmmaking. You, you film what's actually happening, you know, in order to tell the story that you need to tell. And right. So, yeah. No, oh, those are the challenges, but, uh, all right. So let's, let's fast forward a little bit. Yeah. We, we're here to talk about retroactive. Yep. Right. The documentary coming out of the 2022 CrossFit Games. And, you know, what's funny is you talked about stories, seeing what's coming, following the story as it goes out, the athletes as they succeed. And this one, I assume, is heavy on Tia. Right? Not that she takes over the storyline, but her storyline during that year was it was wild because. I mean, the story of we weren't sure if this was going to be her last year. And then there was a time where, like, is she going to lose her in her potentially last year and, and how that unfolds? But that is what's coming here. But I think it's funny. is like you couldn't – no one saw her coming in 2016. What the – Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got, he's like, we got her on the podium. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly – that's about that's what one, Like uh, the – I think uh, everyone has like that one that got away or that one thing. Yeah. Not that one where everybody's like, yeah. yeah. Well, did anybody <laughs> film her? It was like, <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> we and we had like next to nothing. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was crazy. Yeah. And that, and that's exactly why you got to just kind of follow the storylines. Mm -hmm. I know. You know but, but every once in a while, yeah, someone will sneak in there. It's like, Oh crap. We just don't have a ton mm -hmm. of material there. Um, but but yeah, yeah, so okay, so looking at at uh, retroactive is yep. you know what when making this one and there were so many things that was going into last year. I mean, you had Boz taking over the CrossFit Games, you had what T was going through, you had Ricky coming back, you had Roman there for the first time. I mean, as you know, a, a filmmaker and a storyteller, are those things something that you were just like, oh, I cannot wait to just like capture all of these or sometimes when you're given a lot of things there's almost more pressure when it comes to that it's almost like being good at an event right? yeah, it's like yeah. i have no worries about the event i suck at but the one i'm supposed to win that gives me the most stress what was that like coming into last year when you guys were getting set to make this film 
I mean, we were pumped. I mean, this, the storylines going in were, were, were amazing. And there was, um, it's always, you know, with these, I mean, listen, the, like the, with the Frazier era, mm. the stories got a little, bit, hard to... <laughs> got a little bit repetitive. You know what? Actually, that's like, a great point. <laughs> yeah, like, so from, from, a from, you know, After from event three, from now we're standpoint, it was like, all right, guys, come on. We get some new material. Like, <laughs> that's a good point. We, we, uh, we can only tell Matt's story so many times, but like, and, and that's like, you know, tipping my hat at that guy. I mean, mm-hmm. good hell has he left a mark on the sport. Right. And yeah. so cool to see the way he's, he's transitioned and the way he continues to contribute to the community and to the sport. But, um, but no, I mean, going into last year, um, it, we were just pumped. We didn't feel the pressure. We were just excited. And we, because we knew we had a lot to work with, you know, we had Tia, um, going for something that had never been done before. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll put it out there right now. May never happen again. And I don't think people realize how hard I, and that, how like, that is. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was, that was just amazing. And, and T has been so, um, you know, as, as, have, as have all of the athletes, they're, you know, we're, we're very, very fortunate there that they're, that they are as gracious as they are mm-hmm. with, you know, to allow us to kind of like, you know, tag along and spend time with them, not just on the competition floor, but when they escape to the belly of the Coliseum, we go with them and we're just, we're always there. Right. And, and not just, not just at the venue, but like, you know, to tell these stories, we have to go knock on their hotel door, you know what I mean? At the wee hours of the morning or the, wee, you know, at late at night. And uh, anyways, T has always been so, so gracious with us. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, we were, we were just, we were pumped. The storylines going into last year's event were, crazy i mean we had um you know you already mentioned it but we've got you know the roman the ricky um like there was just you know of course medeiros right like yeah. is he the next froning and fraser you know what i mean like that's exciting and he's right. such and a like cool. the rookie girls that were coming in i always feel like what emma lawson did and like mal yeah. o'brien's second year just yeah yeah, yeah. 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 man now that i talk about it it's like now i can't wait to just watch this because like by the foreshadowing or word it's like we're gonna do a whole review in a couple of days after we all get awesome. to watch this and just brag on you guys for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, I can't. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. So looking at this, right. Looking at what you guys did, like what, right. And if you guys are watching with us, this all comes out this Friday, uh, June 30th. Uh, you guys yeah. can go to, I have this pulled up. We'll put the link in the chat for you guys watching us on YouTube. You can go pre-order this as it's coming out. Um, but yes, this all gets released on Friday. Uh, I believe Mariah is doing a one of her own shows with the Savon podcast. Is it tomorrow or is it going to be Friday morning? She, she's on with with Savon tomorrow. Oh, so you got the easier one? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I've literally i've I've only ta- I've only done two. I've only gone on two podcasts. Like that's how little. I've oh wow! Done. I am honored. Then thank you for. I, I was not going to turn down your invite, man. <laughs> I love you, and and, and it really. Um, you know, it's, 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 uh, I, I feel like I owed it to you because you and Sean, and Tommy, like you guys, you guys are so good about taking time after the event, after the longest, craziest week of our, of our year, you know, we come bugging you saying, Hey, can we have you sit for an interview? Like, are you people, kidding oh. me? that was like, I, I, you know, I got to do something with uh buttery bros after 2020. That was really cool to be a part of, uh, when they did a little recap there, but like, you you were turning this the wrong way. Like being able to be a part of this in whatever form or fashion was a total bucket list dream of mine. I have been wanting to come on one of these forever. So like, I appreciate you feel that way, but it's like, I will always make myself available to be a part of one of these. So I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. I mean, I, I, we appreciate, we appreciate you guys after a very long week sitting down with us and helping us stitch together the story of the CrossFit games. Um, and, uh, you know, that a lot of people don't know that, you know, the, the games week is crazy um, for the documentary team. The craziest day of the entire week is literally the day after the event is over. Dude, it is so we, crazy. We, so we, we spend like, you know, in, in, in at night after competition and wraps for a couple of days on like Saturday, Sunday, we're like building and prepping interview set rooms in, in one of the like um, hotels. And then, and then as, as this, the event starts to wrap and we kind of know who we need to sit for interviews to tell the story of the documentary, 
we're like snagging people and we're, we're saying, Hey, Valner, Hey, Fikowski, Hey, whoever, like, can we schedule some time on Monday? And like, we literally, we lock ourselves like in, in these interview like rooms that we've set up from seven in the morning until like nine o'clock at night that, that after black interview rooms, by the way, yeah. everybody's yeah. <laughs> wondering what it's, it's like. like it's like we got two multiple rooms going and it's back to back to back to back all day. So anyways, appreciate you always joining us on the, oh. on those. And yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay. So looking forward is like, let's give some things that would don't spoil it. Obviously. I mean, we know uh, some of how these things end, but like, it's, it's funny that he's like, Oh, I already know what's going to happen. It's like, that's not the point. Like it, it, there's so much things that unfold and come to light and, and, the stories that, like you said, like some of the athletes can tell and the behind the scenes things and the personal touches and what some of the analysts will bring to it. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful symphony of, of just emotion and, and basically like humans in, in this um, atmosphere in this documentary. But like, what are some of the things that you were the most proud of that went into this? Um, I think I, I was actually just talking to Ricky um, last night. Um, it, it, literally in the middle of the, we, it, we were, we were up, we just had a baby eight weeks ago and oh, uh, eight, eight weeks. Oh, I didn't know how uh, recent that was. Congratulations. Eight, eight weeks uh, tomorrow. Whoa. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're it's, in the it's trenches taking grenades, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're pumped. Everything's great. Um, but I was, I was up, um, we were doing a, a, a feeding and diaper, you know, change last night at like three o'clock in the morning. And, mm -hmm. um, Anyways, while we're doing that, I grabbed my phone and um, i would gotten a reply back from Ricky on something that I was talking to him about. And um, anyways, I messaged I messaged back and and I told him I was like, hey man, I can't tell you how many people who have uh, who have given an opportunity to have an early look. I can't tell you how many people have messaged me about how much they enjoyed your story. Oh, and like, that's great. That was, you know, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of the way Mariah and the team um, the way we did that. Mm -hmm. you know, that was a sensitive situation that, um, I mean, you, you help us in through your interview, you, you help us tell that story. Like, and, and, um, and I can recall a couple of sound bites, even from Tommy in the documentary too. Like, um, that was tough. Like people yeah. had mixed emotions about whether or not they were ready to cheer for him or not. You that know, line is so good from Tommy and he's totally oh. right. Yeah. Perfect. But, you know, I think, I think, uh, I, I think we, I think we did that, that that's the part of the story, you know, really well. And, and, um, and I think same thing with Roman, right? Like, mm -hmm. like it's, it's, there's challenges when you're dealing with someone who doesn't speak English. Like, how do you, like, you can point a camera at their, at their competitive, like part of the story, right? Their, their, their display of what they're doing, you know, but uh, his interview was so freaking good. Oh, that's great. Of course, it was all translated, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, it, it's, it's, uh, I think, those are those are a couple of the things that really stand out and then of course um you know i i 100 like one of the things that stands out is is tia's story mm -hmm. uh, she th she threw a bit of a curveball ass there at the end um yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was like we was, we'd, been, we'd been shooting for literally like you yeah. know for we, we all thought she yeah. was firing <laughs> Yeah, it was uh that was that was pretty funny the way and, uh, the moment got the best of them. I and I can't blame them. Listen, yeah. I can't blame them at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've I've had a bunch of follow up chats with with she and Tane, Shane about that, and um yeah, it's pretty funny how that all played out. But um but yeah, like that that was that, that was cool too, right? And like um um but that created a little bit of a challenge to like how do we put a bow on this mm, yeah. this, this thing that's kind of open ended? You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. Um, but but I think I think we did I think we did that well. So did you guys get a chance to talk to Laura much? Yeah yeah she's she's been fantastic. I mean she she, she is fantastic man. Oh yeah yeah Laura she's Laura Math is just a is just a watching her come into her own the last two years, especially at semifinals this year. Like every interview, I was just like, yes. <laughs> it's not two hours of tea. I just saw that comment. I promise, George. <laughs> <laughs> did you not just hear all like the. <laughs> 17 different storylines we get to watch for the next I mean, let's, let's be real though let's be real um tia tia we could have and maybe we should have mm. given tia the entire limelight like she did something last year that was deserving of her mm. of its own documentary you know we didn't do that but but what she did cannot be it can't be overstated like mm. it's 
it's insane. It's amazing. Um, and it was just, it was a really, it was a privilege to be the ones responsible for documenting um, that story in this way to, to share, you know, on iTunes and all these, these platforms for people to enjoy and relive. Um, but yeah. I, I, I can't wait. And like I said, it's coming out Friday. Um, if you guys want to get a little bit more behind the scenes info, Savon's entering, uh, interviewing Mariah, who I mean, like the greatest power couple in CrossFit media right now. Is that what we're going <laughs> to, I don't, I don't know about that. I will, I will, you know, I'm not, I, I am biased of course. Right. But, um, she, she is so freaking talented. Um, she, she's how is that working together in something like this? It's good. I mean, it's right there. Actually, that's that's where the last three there, films. There it is. Is that where the magic? I mean, the movie magic happens. Let's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's that right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that that right there is where um, the last three films have have been. You know, been created. I mean, we, you know, back to 2018. You know, the the the, the almost forgotten film. Well, it was a forgotten film. We just happened to revive it and bring it back. The here. lost. Uh, have you ever seen the Lost Basement Tapes documentary? Uh. Uh-uh. It's. Uh, it's I think, gosh, I'm, it's about Bob Dylan. And for a time, I guess Bob Dylan had like disappeared from the public. And this is a little bit easier. It's like the late seventies and nobody knew where he went. People thought he like died in a car wreck and they're covering it up. And he just like went into a town, uh, this cottage, found a house, locked himself in there for months with some of his bandmates. And they just made music. Like he, awesome. wrote, he wrote hundreds of songs and someone in an auction bought like a nightstand it had all of them in there. Oh my gosh. And so what they did is they took like six or seven musicians in all different genres, gave them the lyrics. Cause these were, these were unmade songs. It was just lyrics. Yeah. They said, you make music to this and it's called the lost basement tapes. Huh. And it's, it's an amazing, wow. amazing like if you guys just love music and in that genre, like, please go watch that. But yeah, the 2018 documentary, thank God it finally got to come to light. And, and Mariah was a, a, a big part of that i mean that was uh, of curating that post uh, yeah 2018 sort of like turned a, a page with the documentaries because you know crossfit went we went through a big restructure um mm-hmm. after the, immediately after the games that year we started just you know that was a very the, emotional one in in a lot of different ways oh yeah yeah documentary. yeah well and that one prevent that one presented some challenges too right because like how, how you know we, we we had to figure out how do we take this thing that happened three years ago and make it relevant and interesting, you know, for people to like want to engage in, you know, for an hour and a half. And, uh, but I, but I think we pulled it off, but yeah, that was kind of like that. The last three years have been sort of, they've been a little bit different, right? Because um, after, after that 2018 restructure um, I immediately, I mean, it was the very next week I was down at Greg's house in Santa Barbara meeting with him saying, Hey, I get it moving in a different direction, but my team just filmed an entire documentary over the past nine months. Mm -hmm. It's, it's sitting on a server. It's like 95% in the can. Let me get the rights to it and and go make this thing and share it with the world. Like, you know, I get it. You're, you're, you know, you're kind of going in a different direction, but you know, it'd be a shame to not do something with that. Anyways, it took, it took a couple of years. I think it was, it took three years, but I, uh, but was finally able to make that happen. And at that point, things looked a, a, a lot different than they had previously. Um, um, you know, and my, my wife and I had formed a production company and, and when we finally got the go ahead to actually make that, we, we did it ourselves. And so that was really cool for just the two of us to take that film, figure out how to bring it back to life. Um, but, uh, and then, and then the last couple have just been, um, the two of us through Times Two Productions, our, our production company, and that's awesome. They're made right there. <laughs> that's great. Well, okay. So listen, I appreciate your time and, and your effort with all this, Tyson. Um, what you guys have done, uh, just and what you've done for the last almost twenty years now, in and around CrossFit. Uh, thank you for yeah. your hard work, for your selflessness, and, and everything that you've put into this. And in, in, all different avenues. And, you know, I really appreciate you guys. I look forward to these documentaries every year. Um, I know the community does as well. And the more they, they know what's coming, I think the better. It's one of the reasons why we, we wanted to come in here, but um, what is, uh, before we hop off here, give a little teaser maybe of one thing that may surprise someone. 
in the documentary. Not the whole thing, but it's like, hey, there's something this where and here that, you know, you didn't see coming. I mean, some of that might be. Um, Maybe how people react to certain things. It might be so, like some of that might be really the, the Tia story. Okay. Um, like I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I, w- I wish we could, I wish we could publish like the whole post interviews. Mm. Like, <laughs> cause Tia's would be amazing. <laughs> like <laughs> she was, her interview this year was absolutely, you, you know how it goes. Like, you yeah. know, they always finish up the CrossFit games and then there's that after party. Like, yeah. Tia, Tia like literally showed up the following morning, like early in the morning. And I'm almost certain she was still a little drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, like, this isn't in the film. So this isn't, I, I'm not answering uh-huh. the question, but I remember at one point she was like, she was sitting like this and she was looking, we've got this reference monitor that's just off, off camera, you know, and she's looking at it and she was like, is that thing crooked? And we're like, no, Tia, sit up. <laughs> It was like, like she was, I think she was a little bit, um, she was like, little, like happy Gilmore. He's like, Hey, what do you think about this? But he's like, I think it goes to the left. He's like, that's ah, cause you're wearing one shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was so funny. But, um, you know, um, her, she, that interview and, and this comes through in the, in the, in the film, it was the most real, the most raw, um, uh, interview that we've ever captured in mm-hmm. all of the years at the games because because of the emotion like how do you like i mean i don't know it, here's how i see it maybe maybe, maybe uh, this is how i see it i think i'm i think i'm i think i'm on point here i i think tia is on par with the lebron james michael jordan kobe bryant's of the world in wow. terms of, of like athletic capability like she is special in mm-hmm. the same way and we as crossfitters i think are so incredibly lucky that we get to witness that her, her, her display mm-hmm. of, of fitness year in and year out. And so to be able to, to be able to document her and get to know her, you know, all these years and then, and then be the ones responsible for capturing history. Mm, yeah. Right? Like her, her making her doing something that I said it before, it might not ever happen again, you know? Yeah. And, and so to, to do that, like was just special to, to make it even more special was to sit her down for her post interview and capture how washed, like you could, I, I don't know how to express this like accurately. I hope it comes across in the film. She was all over the map emotionally mm. because you could, you could see it. She was being torn as like, you know, she, she wants to start a family. She wants to go have a kid. She feels like she needs to turn the page. She's wondering if she's burning out, but she also knows that if she wanted to, she yeah. could continue to whoop ass for the next decade. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, and potentially continue to win after win, after win, after win at the CrossFit games. And like to see, to see one of the world's greatest athletes. And, and I, and I mean that I, and I think we're, I think we're okay. We should be comfortable maybe saying that like, not just greatest CrossFit athletes, but like one of the world's greatest athletes to like, to, to watch one of them to her be so conflicted about what she was doing was insane. It was, can't even imagine that. It wasn't, a, I'll tell you this, there wasn't a dry eye in the interview room. Every mm-hmm. single per, every one of us was in there crying. It was like, dude, if there was a, a camera in the broadcast booth watching her final event, oh, I was there. Yeah. I was a mess. And I didn't even know why. Yeah, because we were witnessing something special. Well, and also I thought that was kind of the end of an era based off what, you know, what we Everybody we, thought. We, we got there. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, and I don't know if what I was talking about is in there sometime and I'll, I'll save it for the documentary. even. But just like what I was watching her do those last three to five bar muscle ups. And I'm not sure how many people got to capture this live and see that. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know. This, this is, this, this is actually one of the things you, and this, we, we tell this story, like it's maybe something people didn't pick up on live, but during that last event, she was deliberately taking her time Mm -hmm. and she talks about it in the post interview. It's in the film. She, she explained that like, in fact, right, right before she took the floor, 
she, we, we captured a moment with, between her and Shane where um, like they acknowledge this is it. This is the last time oh, you're gonna, wow. that I'm going to be stepping on the floor. And she, she, anyways, I don't want to give too much away, but she and she and Shane have like this back and forth. And it's like, Hey, I want to take my time, soak this in and enjoy it. Are you sure I've got the point spread to do that? <laughs> like, and that's more or less like wow. what was, more or less what they were, they were talking about. Yeah. And uh, anyways, we, she talks about that in the film. And uh, do, do you have the last three to five in the film? Do you have a shot of that? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. That's worth going to watch by itself. Yeah. King. If, you, if you don't even know what we're talking about and I don't want to ruin it because it was amazing. Good. Like, yeah, right. yeah. that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Scott Pancheck. Go freak. The whole Scott Pan when he was. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. That was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. But uh, uh, yes, that's right. Jessica guess I'll be pre-ordering the documentary now. That's exactly yeah. what we were. Go pick it. Go go pick it up and enjoy it, guys. We 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 deliberately um, are releasing the film this Friday, uh, June thirtieth, um, to to hopefully kind of capture some time off for the long holiday weekend, Fourth of July. Yeah. Uh, so, sure. yeah. I hope yeah. I hope I hope everybody enjoys it. I I think it's a get your watch parties. Yeah. Maybe get the popcorn, maybe a couple of libations, and just maybe the tissues. That's all I'm saying. Like you know, that's uh, for the eyes. Like it's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna. Yeah, be good. I'll I'll tell you too. Uh, one one thing, and I I've had I've had so many conversations in the last I don't know a couple of weeks with folks. Um, um, we be a part of be, be help be, like be a part of the 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 um helping us generate some excitement around it too. So mm. if you do, if you do watch it, um, if you think it's if you think it's a crap film, <laughs> hold, hold your comments and don't share <laughs> about it. Um, but but if you if you like it, like help us spread the word. Yeah, I love that. These, we're we're really lucky to to make these films and and um, you know I, I I know I'm I'm close to them right as 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 the coordinating producer for them, but I'm also just a fan of the sport and 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 we're we're really lucky to see these guys do these things and and to be able to uh, relive these stories. So you know if if you like it, go 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 reshare something from the CrossFit Games handle or the CrossFit handle and you mm -hmm. know. Tell your friends, tell your affiliate mates, um, you know, yeah, like you said, put together watch parties, have some fun. I mean, we make these things for you and, and I, I hope that the community understands that and that they enjoy them. Yeah. Philip, you're not wrong. Social media team should and will help spread the word a bit more going into this. Uh, hey, Tyson, listen, I know I've got you a little bit over time. I thank you so much for you trusting me to, bring on a pod, get you out of it, <laughs> out of, from behind the curtains and, and onto the podcast. It, it means a lot. And I just love, you know, the, the conversations we get to have over these, these last few years and, you know, the relationship we, we have watching each other. I mean, shoot, we've been watching each other, like live life to the fullest yeah. of the highs and the lows for, for quite some time. So, you know, you're, I hope people appreciate you as much as I appreciate you. I have the unfair advantage of knowing who you are as a person, but uh, if anybody else got the opportunity, it's a, it is a great opportunity indeed. So uh, I want to thank you for your time for this. Uh, I can't wait for the documentary. Again, it's released on Friday. You guys go ahead and go get it. Uh, and like I said, if you guys, if you're watching it, you got it queued in, you get the email that you're getting at receipt, throw that on your story, tag us. Well, I mean, tag Tyson, tag myself. We'll freaking repost that. Yeah. all day long and we want to we want everybody to get an opportunity to enjoy this as much as um we have so uh before we sign off i'll drop the trailer one more time when it's over we'll be out so tyson thank you so much for your time thank you guys for joining us and we're one more time the trailer for retroactive I have so much respect for my competitors, but when people compare me to the other competitors, it really doesn't even faze me because I know I'm already going to win. Athletes want to compete at the CrossFit Games because it is the pinnacle of their sport. If you just get to that point, you are one of the 40 fittest people on the planet. I don't enter a competition thinking that I'm going to lose. Going into the CrossFit Games, my sole purpose there was to win. 
Coming into the 2022 season, Tia Tumi has a chance to stand alone in history, to be the first and only athlete to win six consecutive CrossFit Games titles. The question was like, how is she gonna do it? And what's that gonna look like? I don't think it's gonna look like years in the past where it's just win, 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 win. Tumi's back to zero. Oh no. And O'Brien is across. I do not care how hard I go, I'm just going for it. A horse will race so fast that it's hard to explode, so that's now. For the first time in five years, we are going to get to see Ricky Garrard at the CrossFit Games. The last time we saw him was 2017. He finished third, and then he tested positive for PEDs. Seeing Ricky wearing the white leaders jersey, I think forced a lot of people to confront a question that maybe we hadn't really considered about what our feelings would be around the possibility of not only Ricky coming back, but winning. He dropped that, I was like, you're gone. Yeah. Everyone's just roaring for someone to see Ricky. <laughs> Rum Krennikov went into destruction mode. He just looked like a machine out there. I know you're hurt. Everybody's been hurt. And you're tougher than everybody. You just get so hyped up and you're like, I'm ready to attack this. This is one of the most epic Saturday nights we've ever had. We've seen this before between Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath. He's got to keep his balance. He's got to keep his balance. Gerard will do it and Medeiros will do it.